This video and channel is for adult collectors only. Before we get into the video, make sure y'all like, subscribe if you're new to me. Come on, what are you doing? If you're not sub to me by now, my content is fire from shows and resumes videos, stunt motions, tour reviews, tour photography breakdowns, music occasionally. My Instagram and TikTok are all linked down below. And yeah, let's get straight to it. Okay, hello and welcome. I can't believe I'm going to be saying this to the stop motion review of Transformers Studio Series War for Cybertron game Voyager Class Optimus Prime. Ooh, what a mouthful, but I can't believe we finally have this figure. I've been waiting for an update of this design of Optimus for a long time, so let's get right into it. <sighs> so far, Leo Convoy has been my favorite release this year, but this is a close contender. His sculpt is amazing, he looks good, feels nice, except for a few quality issues which I'll touch on later. No paint issues, almost everything on this guy is pretty much perfect. No dreaded clear plastic that I've touched on on pretty much every stop motion review this year so far. It's pretty crazy the amount of clear plastic reuse, but nothing on this guy. Just a nice, chunky, solid Voyager that almost, but not quite, brings me back to the old days, much like Leo Convoy. The head sculpt is just mm, so spicy with the sharp sculpted details, bright blue paint on the eyes, and shiny silver for the faceplate. Also looks just as good at a side profile. The Axie comes with this cool, dope sculpt, but that paint for the energy is kinda weak. It looked way better on the render on the back of the box in my opinion. You can also open up the two halves on the top of the axe to give it this look, which I really like. Love that option. I think this is the first time we've gotten this on an Optimus Prime axe in, in a Hasbro figure. And you could also take the handle of the axe and it splits apart into three pieces so you could hold it in different ways, which I'll show off later later on in the video. Very nice touch. And his gun arm is done up really good. No real paint, it's just casted in black plastic, but sculpted really good and it looks the part. I really like the way this gun turned out. You can see I did a transformation stop motion at the beginning of the video with his gun, which I love. And to plug it into the arm, you got a hole right there on the back and you untab the uh, hand there at the bottom and you got a port right there and you just slap the gun right in there and I love the way this looks. I just, uh, this brings back so many memories to when I was a little kid watching the trailers and the gameplay because I couldn't get the game when I was little. I just never had an Xbox or a PS, what was it, PS3 at the time. So yeah, this brings back memories. And to show off the other way you could hold the axe, you could take off the one piece of the stem and you could have a shorter axe and you could flip the uh, top piece out and do it like this. And I think he did this when he was breaking free Zeta Prime or one of those scenes in the game. And I really liked this option. I think it's really well done and they should do this with more uh, axes when our Raptors Prime comes with one. And surprise, surprise, you open up the chest and you got a delectable matrix up in there with some nice gunmetal paint and wire sculpted all in there. Nice paint on the matrix with the blue and the gold. It's just really nice in there. You can remove the matrix and you get more of that delicious gunmetal chest detail up in there. But there is one complaint when you open up the chest compartments, there's stress marks on each side of it. This happened like right out of the box. I I'm not one to man handle my figures. I have Transformers from 20, 25 years ago, so don't be saying that in the comments. It's I think it's just the type of plastic they chose and the tolerances with it. So just be careful of that in hand. Taking a closer look at the Matrix, uh, again, I love the details the gold paint the bright blue paint up in there for the energy effect this is probably gonna rival the big convoy matrix with my big convoy figure that's my favorite matrix and this is rivaling that in my opinion but the one complaint i got with it is you got a removable matrix with an optus prime that can't even hold it you got the circle jerk hands there's no hand articulation up in there like what they did with some of the newer optus prime molds and they didn't even slit uh, a breaking point in between the thumb and the pointer figure finger when those meet so you could slide in there like the laser optos prime mold nothing so you got an accessory right there that you basically can't do anything with except for using it within his chest which optos prime has done in many incarnations and especially in this game too so it's not terrible but it would have been nice if you could hold it when you move the wrists he has so much armor in the back of his wrist that when you rotate it when he's holding something, you can't have him hold something when you rotate the wrist to the left. 
So, yeah, that sucks. There are some areas on the figure that feel a bit finicky and loose joints with the plastic, like with the shoulders and then the knees there, and the arms are a little bit loose, the waist swivel's a little loose. It's just a bit meh with that part of things. And whoop de doo we got more stress mark issues. So when you lift up the lower part of the legs for transformation, you got a stress mark there on the hinge of plastic. Probably cheaper plastic or tolerance issues, who knows, but it happens. Articulation time! Now for some size comparisons, let's bring in Tarn and Dragon Megatron because I sold off all my old Warf Cybertron and Fall, Fall of Cybertron figures last year. Yay, lucky me. But anyway, I think Tarn fits in pretty good with the whole Cybertron aesthetic, obviously. And also Dragon Megatron because he's me mechanical and not in Earth mode. So yeah, Dragon Boy! And here he is next to two recent Prime-esque figures, Earthrise, Optimus, and Leo Convoy. And Leo Convoy, one of my favorite Prime-esque figures in recent years, or my favorite Prime-esque, I'd say. And this guy is rivaling it. Earthrise Prime, I thought it was alright, but, you know, I have my issues, a lot of issues with that one. But uh, these look great together. I'm loving the Optimus Primes we've been getting the past few years, and this just rivals it all, yes! And here he is compared with his game model, and they did a pretty great translation. You know, there's a little bit of extra stuff hanging off in the back. The legs are a little bit too challenging due to the transformation and he's a little bit squatter and you know the, the proportions aren't perfect and the wheels aren't positioned perfectly on his back but you know it's still the best representation of this game Optimus we've gotten and I really love how this figure turned out it's it's just fantastic side note you can have Earthrise Optimus holding the axe which looks absolutely badass I'd say transformation time This truck mode is just killer. So sleek and curvy, nicely detailed. Ugh, he's just so big and chunky in hand, but I do have some issues with it. The visible hands is just terrible. On Tarn, it wasn't as noticeable, but this is worse, especially since the back is what you saw a lot or you saw the most when playing the game. Huge L in my opinion. I also made a oopsie when transforming the arms. Here's the correct way. And you do got weapon storage. You got two slots back there in the truck mode. You just slot the gun right up in there. And I really like like the way this looks. Gives you a nice weaponizer sort of mode. And I think you did use this in the game sometimes too, which this is a nice touch. But you can also plug the axe on top of the gun. And this just looks absolutely ridiculous. I don't know why they even thought to include this in the instructions or advertise it at all. It just looks terrible. Now for some size comparisons. Since I don't have any work Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron figures, like I said, I sold them off last year, sorry about that. But here he is next to Saucer B and IDW Blur. Again, I do think these fit in because it's Cybertronian stuff and uh, it's not like this, the uh, aesthetic is too far off with the War for Cybertron game stuff. So I think this looks great. Uh, you could put it with a lot of different Cybertronian figures, so loving this. Okay, my final thoughts on this Voyager Optimus. I just can't believe we finally got this figure in modern Hasbro Transformers landscape. As you can tell by the video, this guy is pretty freaking great in my opinion. I do have some issues with him, like I stated early in the video, you know, some plastic issues, some stress marks here and there, um, just some little nitpicks here and there, but other than that, I think this guy came out great. Definitely pick him up. 
Uh, he's one of the greatest modern Voyagers we've gotten, or probably one of the greatest we've gotten in the Generations line, period, at this point. So yeah, definitely get him if you can. I think this guy turned out pretty great, despite some of the issues I have with him. Get him, get him, get him. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Stay tuned on the channel. I think the next Star Motion review is going to be this Voyager class battle trap. I'm not sure with all these new figures coming out. We'll see how the schedule pans out. I'll let you guys know.